Welcome back to Microsoft Build. Uh, I'm your host, I'm Jeremiah Dooley, and I'm here with Marcus and Manoj, and we are gonna talk about something that I've been waiting to talk about here at, at part of Microsoft for a good long while. But before we get started, uh, thanks for being here, and if you don't mind, introduce yourself to the audience and tell them a little bit about what you do here. Yeah, great. Hi, uh, Jeremiah, nice to meet you. My name is Marcus Hain. I'm a senior PM inside of Azure Dedicated. Yeah, and I'm uh, Manoj Sharma. Uh, Glad to be with, here with you, and uh, I'm VP of Products uh, at Cloud Simple, which is the company in technology powering what we're talking about today. Excellent. So, Marcus, that's a great place for us to start. Give us a little bit of an overview when we're talking about uh, bringing VMware workloads into Azure. Tell us a little bit about what we announced last week and what the structure of that was, and what we're what we're offering up for customers to be able to use. Yeah. So, I mean, last week was tremendous. Uh, we, you know, it's been a long time coming. Who would have thought, you know, VMware would eventually be able to run natively inside of Azure, and it's happened. And so, at Dell Technologies World uh, last week in Vegas, we announced uh, VMware um, uh, in, in Azure Solutions by Cloud Simple, and uh, I, it was very well received. Uh, we had we had tremendous activity around our booth um, after the after the launch event, and uh, customers were just asking tons of questions, which is, which is good, to, good to see the enthusiasm. Um, essentially, it's a, it's a first party sold by Microsoft, supported by Microsoft solution uh, that allows customers to essentially move their VMware state that they have on-prem into Azure, and then obviously use the richness and uh, you know, the entire ecosystem that Azure has to offer to modernize the application, as an example. So they, they can actually run VMware hosts natively, natively inside Azure? Inside of Azure. Okay, so that's, there's a lot that we can do with that. When we, yes. when we look at that and we're putting together the product, who are, the, who are the, the target audience that we're looking at? What type of cloud consumers are we looking at that are going to find this interesting or that are going to be able to find something differentiated to be able to use? Yeah, so uh, you know, VMware is used by IT administrators in the enterprise today. And, uh, you know, given that we're running VMware natively on bare metal in Azure, you know, inside Azure locations, uh, you would naturally expect that the IT admin, you know, sure. the VMware admin, the cloud admin is the, is the target. But if you look at what enterprises want to do with this solution, it's not just to kind of get VMware infrastructure and environment from point A to point B. Right. They want to do cloud transformation. They want to embrace the cloud. And so, what we have done here is build a very much cloud integrated solution. It's not just VMware running on bare metal. And when you think about that, there are a lot of use cases that come up, such as infrastructure agility. I mean, so what we are enabling the IT admins to do is to manage the VMware environment and become cloud admins inside a cloud. Right. So you're running a cloud inside a cloud. And so um, what they would look for is you know, automation, infrastructure agility. Uh, and so that's something that we also deliver as part of this. But uh, when customers want to do cloud transformation, uh, they want to build hybrid applications. They want to uh, integrate with Azure services. And so what we've done is build a very unique, uh, unified sort of management infrastructure that also enables developers to reach back out into the, the VMware environment that's running in Azure now as well as build, uh, you know, integrate it with Azure services and Azure IaaS and all the goodness and the innovation of Azure in a very okay. integrated fashion. So let's, let's talk about that for just a second, because what you just gave me was three different audiences, right? We've got a VMware administrator audience yeah. who has a context and a set of tools that they use on-premises today to be able to manage their infrastructure environments. Right. And we talked about the Azure administrator context where there's a set of tools and a way that we manage and deploy and automate. And then the third one was the developer context where yeah. we have service interfaces and where we're, the infrastructure becomes kind of secondary to how it is that I want to build and deploy this application. Um, give me, if you can, an example of the different ways that people are going to be able to do that. Because obviously, I'm a, if I'm a VMware administrator, if I'm one of my friends out there who's running these big or small VMware environments, my context is going to be vCenter. Right? Yeah. My context is going to be uh, you know, being able to do things directly through the tools that I have. How does that work for the rest of them? Am I going to be able to manage a bare metal VMware environment through the Azure portal? 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I think you know the the fact that this is an Azure integrated offering offered by Microsoft, offered by uh, in in Azure as a first party. Uh, absolutely. Uh, what we are enabling customers to do is uh, essentially to kind of get their environment in, initialized, you know, get their bare metal environment as well as the VMware environment fully provisioned and ready to consume uh, in a matter of minutes. So think about that. Like, if I were to say, hey, I can give you a data center with VMware running ready to go uh, and, uh, you know, uh, ready to consume, uh, and, uh, you know, you would come back to me and say, okay, that's probably going to take me a few months to, you know, get the order going, get the network set up, get the edge networking, get the gateway, get the firewall, get the integration um, on, with the tools and the monitoring and all of that. Um, and, you know, so it's a long project. Yeah. What we can do in this Customers context... say weeks. Usually they say weeks. Yeah. Weeks. yeah. What we can do in this context is literally click a button and you get back a ready-to-consume VMware environment with all the things that I was talking about, all the data center and every networking and storage integration and the monitoring and everything in 30 minutes. Excellent. So if we do that, then the question becomes, you know, there are lots of different ways for me to be able to do hybrid IT and hybrid data centers, and there are lots of different ways for me to be able to implement that. I guess the key then becomes what additional services, what additional uh, Azure pieces come into play if I'm a customer and I've started deploying into this environment. Are there, are there specific services that we see customers adopting faster or uh, adopting kind of in a more integrated fashion because those workloads happen to be sitting in, inside an Azure environment? Yeah, I think a very key one is Azure AD as an example, right? So many customers have an Azure AD tenant, um, and they can configure their uh, VMware environment to use Azure AD as another authentication uh, mechanism, and that saves them you know, some round trip time when their workloads are in the cloud to go back to on-prem and where their AD tenants may live today. Um, they can instead choose to you know, move that to the cloud and use the Azure AD tenant as an authentication source. And, but there's many other Azure services that we see useful. Yeah, yeah, I think when you think about you know, the role we're talking about, again, the VMware administrator, right? one of the things they want to do, it's not just, like I said, to consume uh, you know, <coughs> VMware uh, and, and be done with that. Now you're in Azure, so what does the VMware admin do for a living? Right? Uh, they, they are responsible for keeping the environment up and running. Well, you've got Azure Monitor. Right. You, they're responsible for securing the environment. You've got Azure Security Center. You know, you've got, uh, you, you want to make sure you can back up the workloads. You've got Azure Storage, you know, and, and the multiple tiers and the high availability options. Uh, and the list goes on mm -hmm. and on. Everything sure. that an admin can do. But the beauty is this solution also enables the other half of the picture that we were talking about earlier, the developer angle. And so, like I said, you know, containers, ML, you know all the uh, right. uh, uh, you know uh, amazing services and innovations coming uh, into the uh, uh, into the mix uh, from Azure. Developers can then access that, and then we've built an interface for the first time ever in this service that provides an infrastructure as a service consumption paradigm on VMware, which is integrated into Azure right. that gives customers you know uh, you know the VMs coming from VMware look like Azure IaaS VMs. Right. Well, and, and I think that that actually brings up a, a bigger point where uh, bare metal hosts by themselves is almost incidental cloud consumption, right? I have a bare metal host inside my data center. I have a bare metal host inside Azure. Um, what this sounds like is I can use that as the platform to start being very deliberate about how and where I start to adopt the different cloud services, right? It's not simply lifting and shifting hosts, not just the VMs, but the hosts themselves from my on-premises data center into Azure. It's opening up that cloud consumption mm -hmm. model altogether to be able to say, if these additional things are important to me, I now have a way to be able to consume that directly, which I would not have had at all if I hadn't moved those into this type of model. Absolutely. I mean, um, I used to be in VMware, and I've worked with over 18,000 customers one of the biggest problems they used to face was capacity management, right? Now I've got a, you know, I've got a, a pool of infrastructure. VMs can be created anytime. There's VM sprawl. Right. So capacity management, you know, meeting the demand of the applications, <clears throat> meeting the demand of the consumption, you know, and, and dynamically sort of adjusting to that was something that is unsolved till today on premises, sure. right? 
And the cloud really brings that to, into bear, uh, into, into, into bear, uh, bearing on, on the VMware context, which is, look, I've got, you know, you want a, a node, you want more capacity, click a button and you've right. got it, right? And so, we've, so what we like to say is, we're not just bringing VMware to the cloud, we're bringing, bring the cloud. The, uh, we're bringing the cloud and Azure awesome. to VMware. So one of the things uh, that I know that, uh, that I get asked uh, when, when looking at something like this is going to be that there's an entire class of, of partnerships, an entire class of applications that VMware customers are using, whether it's for uh, disaster recovery or backups or replication, that require the customer to be able to have direct access to the host from a programmatic standpoint, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking Veeam, I'm thinking Zerto, I'm thinking Veritas, things that, that end up running uh, directly on those hosts in order to be, help, be able to have access to yeah. uh, the VMs. I know that that's not the easiest thing to facilitate in a cloud environment or in a, you yeah. know, a, a bare metal hosting type environment. What capabilities will this service have around host access? Um, and is there anything new that we've tried to bring to that to make it a little bit easier? Yeah, that, that's an excellent question. And I think it cuts to the core of why we're doing this. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because uh, we want to bring the operational continuity, you know, the, the IT processes. If we're doing it on premises, yeah. I need to be able to do it wherever my yeah, second site design. happens. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's why yeah. we're doing this. And, and that, that enables instant adoption of the cloud, which is what customers want. Get away from data centers, get away from hardware management. But the point is, VMware environments have these built-in processes that have been hardened over the years. And, and uh, you know, changing that in the, in the cloud requires uh, you know, a lot of transformation efforts, which we eliminate with this offering, because you bring your tools as is into this context. Now, that does require some specialized capabilities. Uh, in order to install a tool like Zerto, for example, uh, you need to be able to become an admin in this environment. And so we do provide this unique capability called escalation of privileges, which allow you to become a full admin and essentially install the tool that you need and uh, essentially get this operational continuity promise. But we can do that, that, we can do that enterprise class, right? I mean, it is Azure. There is still an expectation about how we delegate that type of authority. This isn't, we don't just give root passwords to right. people for hosts, right? I right. mean, is there some mechanism in there that's, that's making that a little bit more Azure grade from a, from a delegation standpoint? Right, absolutely. I mean, there are full, uh, full uh, you know, there's a full level of monitoring and full level of access control separation. For example, you get the vCenter administrative privilege to do this, but you still don't get to change the ESXi host, right? The, the yeah. host is fully locked down. Excellent. And as a service provider, we are, you know, we yeah. make sure that it's, the whole environment is kind of enabled for you as a service. So we like to call it vCenter administration as a true service, right? It's, it's a safe way of giving you elevated privileges. So we're not giving you SSH access into the host so you can That's you know, finagle with the hypervisor. It's a safe way for customers to install the tools and you know, then we revoke the privileges again and they carry on. Well, and that's, and that's kind of the, you know, the perfect way to wrap that up. I mean, I'm excited that the product is finally out there. I'm excited for customers to be able to go out and see um, you know, what they're doing for it. Is there a way for people to be able to go out? I know we did a yeah. great demo of it earlier in the session. Yeah. Is there somewhere that they can go to see that or to get more a information? Absolutely. So obviously it's live on Azure.com. So customers can go and uh, read all the documentation. They can familiarize themselves with the product. There's also a request for a free trial. Uh, so we're able to offer a 30-day uh, free trial uh, on the service. Um, and uh, if customers can request that through Azure.com, and you know, we'll get the request and we'll we'll take it further with them. But it's a it's a great way to try the the product out before they actually commit to it. Excellent. Yep. So we've got about uh, 30, 35, 40 seconds here. Let's wrap this up with you. Know, if you had to give one takeaway to customers who are watching this, who are running VMware today, and who are trying to figure out if this is going to be a product that they're interested in, what's the one thing that you would want to use to get them excited? about going out and finding more? Yeah, I think it, it's got to be the unified management, right? Uh, what we are able to do with unified management is bring the VMware VM management for end users, tenants, and application owners into in, in an integrated fashion into Azure with all the access control and the goodness of ARM, Azure Resource Manager, but also all the, uh, the other capabilities of VMware. So we're truly bringing together the best of both worlds you know, the, the Microsoft Azure world and the VMware world on uh, the private cloud. Perfect. And I like to say we're creating a song of fire and ice. That's here. awesome. Yeah. Excellent. 
Yeah. Marcus Manoj, thank you very much thank for uh, spending some time with us here. This is uh, this is really exciting. I'm definitely interested to see where it goes from here yeah. um, and to see what other additional capabilities. Thanks, Jeremiah. Thanks, Manoj. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank so you. we're nearing the end of Microsoft Build, but we still have two amazing sessions left uh, that you won't want to miss. So stay with us.